So we have the developer update and year seven roadmap additions. Let's talk about it. Kings and Queens, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. The developers have posted a little update for us as well as some additions to the year seven roadmap now that it's coming to its conclusion. And there's actually some decent information in this. We're going to go ahead and talk about everything that's on this website and this page that they posted. On top of that, we are live on Twitch. We haven't been live in a while, uh, but we're back. So make sure you guys are coming out to Twitch. I would love to see your faces there. Let's jump on into all of the information. First and foremost, they spoke about blood web improvements that are going to be coming. Woohoo! They said if you went back in time one year, people... Uh, and told people that you'd have too much blood points and that would become an issue, nobody would have believed you. Yet here we are. With the various improvements made to the progression over the past year, many of you have found yourself with a surplus of blood points and not enough time to spend them, making the spending process a bit of an inconvenience. Within the next few months, we'll be making improvements to the blood web to make it easier and faster to spend your blood points than ever before. Woohoo! This is great! I am happy. The amount of times that I'm like, if this would just be way, way, way easier, it would be good. This is absolutely fantastic. There's so many things that they could do to make the blood web a lot easier. One of the things that I've spoken about was essentially allowing the player to draw a line of things that they want. Just click, 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 multiple things, get on to the next blood web or have an automatic system that just levels everything up through the blood web, you know? prioritize what you want let it have options if you want perks add on specific things let it make you choose from the list and just let it do its thing automatically spend those blood points it would be absolutely amazing and hopefully that is something we see in the future there's tons and tons and tons of things that they can do to the blood web to make it a lot more improved next on the list is survivor bot loadouts they said that survivor bots received a very warm welcome when they debuted late last year Though the survivor bots are robots, we're sure their coal mechanical hearts were touched. Since then, an average of 70,000 bot matches were have been played every single day. This feature would make it easy to jump in and try out some new content in the Forge and the Fog chapter when it was released. A time where killer queues tend to be longer for everyone in the flocks uh, that are trying to play out the new edition of the roster. They said the first version of bots and custom matches were fairly simple, but we're expanding the feature shortly with loadouts, allowing you to introduce more variety to the survivor bots you face. Please note that not all the perks will be available for bots. Some perks will ultimately be too complicated for them to use effectively, and we'd hate to make them too smart and be the cause of the robot uprising. So that's pretty cool. I'm assuming things like sprint bursts, things that would affect your generator times, stuff like that would work. And then the perks that are just a little bit too complicated, that isn't just two or three lines of codes, they'll have to, you know, change kind of like, um, what's that new perk call? I don't remember the name, where you can borrow time from a generator and then put it on a different, uh, you know, generator. The newest one for Victorio. I, my, there's too many perks circulating in my brain. Uh, but perks like that, I assume, won't be working. Uh, just because it's a little bit too complex to let the bot know when to use the perk and then when to, you know, uh, release the energy into the other perk, essentially. So things like that probably wouldn't work, but one or two line coatings, adrenaline, sprint burst, dead hard, they all would probably work out. You know, we'll probably see those perks coming in, which could lead to some interesting gameplay. And if you are using these bots to understand killer more or just have a nice general game, it could work. So that works quite nice. Next on the list is map repeat prevention, which probably sounds as is. They said soon we'll introduce a new mechanic which guarantees that you won't be sent to the same map twice in a row. The odds of being sent to the same map will also be decreased, yet still possible for the next few matches. So that's nice. We're going to have some variety. I'm assuming this doesn't mean if an offering is in play because how would they know? So if you just went on Eerie of Crows and then someone runs the offering for Eerie of Crows, you're probably still going to go to Eerie. But in just a regular match where no one's running any add-ons, the map will probably not be the same. Now, this is quite interesting because every map that every person's going to be playing on would be kind of different. So I'm assuming what they're going to do is have a wide pool of maps. And for all five of the players, whatever map they all just played on, They'll use whatever maps are not in 
correlation. So you could have up to five different maps and let's say the pool is 12 maps, you can now pick from the other remaining seven. And that way you'll be able to actively just pick whatever map that nobody else has played on and whoop de doo you won't have the same map. And then they said that this will also happen uh, for more maps in the future, which is still more math essentially. So now the next game, there'll be a even least likely chance you'll get Area of Crows, but you also now need to double down on all of the maps prior. So they're just trying to keep the rotation fresh and it's a, it's a lot of math essentially to increase the probability and statistics of getting a specific map, but I can see how this works. All in all, all you need to know is that the map repeat rotation will probably working in your favor and you won't see the same maps unless someone runs a offering. Moving on forward, we have the visual terror radius. They said that this past year, we've been working hard to make Dead by Daylight more accessible to a wider audience. For those who are deaf or hard of hearing, the terror radius can be difficult or even impossible to keep track despite of a crucial part of the game. To remedy this, we'll be introducing new accessibility options which, when enabled, will provide a visual representation of the heartbeat. So this could be very similar to uh, DBD Mobile. So we've seen exactly what this kind of looks like, where the, your actual survivor, you can see their heartbeat. And the more it pulsates, the closer the killer is to you. I'm assuming this is what they're going to be doing. If not, they might just have a little tiny uh, bar that shows you the actual radius of what the killer is. Although I could see regular players using this to their advantage, those who are not hard of hearing or deaf, that just put this on the game to have a little bit of an advantage. So I think the heartbeat itself pulsating would be a little bit better, and that way it could be pretty equal for everybody rather than just a number that pops up and says, hey, the killer is getting close. Moving on forward, they said that they are going to have some visual updates. The Realm Beyond continues. We're in the process of visually updating one of the older realms. By now, you probably know what to expect. So we'll have some teasers for you when the update's a little closer. That being said, there aren't many realms left to update, so you have a pretty good chance of guessing what it is. Probably Mother Dwelling or Swamp. These are two of the maps that we've wanted to be changed for a very, very long time. So having that visual update coming in would be absolutely phenomenal. And I'm really looking forward to what they're going to be doing to it. Swamp and Haddonfield were two of the maps that I said really, really needed some good buffs to make them look nice and change the layouts of them. And ironically, Haddonfield and Swamp were two of the last maps to receive this buff. Uh, so, I mean, we'll see what they end up doing. I'm looking forward to it and I'm excited. And then spoke about perk updates, woohoo. They said we are going to put some focus on general improvements and the quality of life features as of late, but we are pleased to say that perk balancing is going to pick back up shortly. Like before, we're hoping to include a small package of perk changes with each mid-chapter update going forward. We'll share more details with these perk changes when it comes closer to release, but we know what you're all going to ask. Yes, one of the perks we're looking at rhymes with Shrimruption. Shur sure <laughs> Oh no, I can't say it. Shurruption. There we go. Shurruption. Uh, what a weird word. Eruption, essentially, is going to be changed. And I, I can't speak. But yes, eruption is going to be getting some changes. We can talk about more of that in a separate video. To wrap things up, they said limited time cosmetics. I know some of you guys have been uh, wondering about this, they said, For recent events, some of the most festive and spooky outfits were debuted, having only appeared for the limited time before returning to the vault, taking some holiday-themed cosmetics from the past years with them. We never had an opportunity to announce these cosmetics, so we'd like to take a moment to discuss and tell you how they're going to be working forward. As the game have grown with hundreds of outfits and have been added into the store, where one outfit used to be a major addition these days, it's just one of the many to choose from. By vaulting these holiday-themed cosmetics, we hope to simplify the store and make their seasonal offerings more meaningful when they return each year. Do not fear, we guarantee they will return. We know many of you don't want to miss the opportunity to get these cosmetics, so we want to clarify how these limited cosmetics would work. New limited-time cosmetics will be available to purchase with Oryx cells. When the event period ends, these outfits will be vaulted until they return the following year. The next time they return, they'll be available with both Oryx cells and Iridescent Shards. For the sake of transparency, there's a complete list of seasonal collections to date 
which will be available for a limited time. We hope that this list gives you a better idea of what to expect and allows you to plan around them. So they basically go on to say uh, a bunch of different cosmetics, which I will show on screen for you guys right now. So essentially, as I said, this will be vaulted and then it will come back around the next year and you can basically get this for free as well with some shards, although you would have to save up quite a lot of shards. And that, my friends, is pretty much everything that we have in this mini developer update. How awesome. I hope you guys did enjoy. Again, we are live on Twitch. Make sure you guys are joining up. We're going to be doing a nice stream today. As always, I'm the king. I tip my crown to you guys and we'll see you in the fog.